So following on from volleys in the last video this week, it's drop volleys and drop shots. And we're gonna start with drop volleys and we'll start by having a look at Paul hitting a few. So to hit a great drop volley, you need to imagine that your racket is cushioning the ball at impact, which involves deceleration. In fact, the only shot in tennis where you'd would, you would want to decelerate the racket for contact. A great way to practice that deceleration is this exercise. And a great way to get a sense for that cushioning feel is to ask a friend to throw a giant water bomb at you. And when you catch it, you're going to try and cushion its impact so it doesn't burst in your hands. I've got one. You've got what? A giant water balloon. Shall we try it? God, OK then. Let's try. Sorry. Do you want it back, Jeremy? No! Oh, OK. I'll just put it down here then. Um, so... To add to that cushioning effect, you also want to try and open the racket face at contact a little bit as well, because that will add a little bit of backspin and it will allow the, rack, the ball to come up off the racket and drop just on the other side of the net. Let's take a look at it in closer detail. See how the racket face opens up and cushions the impact of the ball. Just like I cushioned the impact of the water bomb. Now the only exception to that deceleration rule is if you're trying to do one of those fancy trick shots where the ball has so much spin it bounces on one side of the net and then goes back over onto your side. For that you need a bigger swing, a lot of racket acceleration and a lot of skill. That's it! That's on that. Got it! Got it! Got it! Drop shots are quite different because you're hitting them from further back in the court and crucially after the bounce. You don't want to decelerate the racket on these. You need racket acceleration, you need to hit them with energy because otherwise they won't have enough spin to be effective and likely they won't get over the net. Let's have a look at some. So it's a pretty steep, high to low swing path. And just like the volleys, it's driven by the shoulder. A common mistake people make is to try and make the spin by using excessive wrist movement, but this rarely ends in success. The swing path on the backhand drop shot is often high to low and across the body, whereas on the forehand drop shot, that across the body element is normally reduced. Let's have a look in closer detail. Once the shot is set up, notice how the shoulder drives that steep swing path down and across the body. Racket acceleration adds the spin, not excessive wrist movement. And here we see similar on the forehand, although the natural swing path is far less across the body. And of course both these shots have their own one-two rhythm as well. The setup phase is quite similar, although it's worth noting that when you're setting up for that drop shot, you want to try and do it quite late and with a bit of disguise so that your opponent finds it tougher to anticipate what you're going to do. The execution phase part two is obviously quite different. The drop volley, it's that deceleration and cushioning feeling, whereas the drop shot, you need to be far more aggressive and with racket speed attacking that ball for it to be effective. And the grip, the shake hands grip that we talked about in the last video for volleys, that works great for these shots as well. Yeah? Just imagine you're shaking hands with the racket handle, and right there you've got a great grip that will work for all the shots that were featured in this video and the last video. That's all for today. I look forward to seeing you next time. Oh, no! <laughs>